So guys, here it is, the uh, XSR 900, 847 cc's, three-cylinder engine, six-speed manual, <coughs> manual transmission, excuse me. Uh, you got a five and a half inches of travel here on the front inverted fork, 5.1 inches here on the rear mono. Uh, ABS is standard, traction control standard as well, three modes. Uh, the bike itself, Yamaha claims this was designed specifically for rider comfort, so we'll find out here in a second when we get on the bike uh, and take a look and see how this guy feels. But from what I've been hearing, this bike shouldn't be a letdown at all. Uh, it's got three engine modes, your standard mode, your B mode, which is your more subtle, more relaxed mode, slower throttle response, and then you've got the A mode, which is going to be your aggressive mode, your balls to the wall, haul ass, get going mode. So what we'll do now is we're going to get on the bike, we're going to start it up, we're going to take a look and see what the gauge cluster, and what everything feels like. Ooh. It does sit a little bit high for myself. I'm about 5'11", 230 pounds. Uh, I'm on the balls of my feet. By no means is it really high. Um, but if you are a shorter rider, you may want to lower the suspension just a smidge. If it has that ability, I'm not actually sure. Should probably check it out. Um, <coughs> get into the riding position here. Visibility over the mirrors appears to be okay. I'd say maybe about 20% of the mirrors is being blocked by my elbows. So pretty good visibility. All right, now that we've completed the uh, safety briefing for the ride here, let's resume where I was. Uh, let's take a look at the dash cluster here. We'll hit the key mode. Obviously the dash is just this simple little area here. Uh, we've got a gear indicator. We've got your mode indicator currently in B. Speedo, traction control setting was one. Uh, you can turn it on and off. Uh, engine temperature. It's all selected through here. You can change out your fuel, mileage, average, odometer. You know, all the standard stuff is here. Um, fuel gauge at the bottom. ABS, trash control, engine, oil, signals, all that usual stuff is here. All the controls are in the usual spot. So, let's start this guy up and see what we get. Ooh, that's nice. Very smooth. No weird vibrations. Clutch is very, very soft though. I have to check that out a little bit more here on the ride. Let's put the visor down because we're on the verge of uh, getting going here. Let's rock this. Well, suspension feels medium. It doesn't feel too firm. It doesn't feel too soft just yet. Uh, they did tell us that there is a section of the, uh, the course that we're going on that's essentially selected for the Tenere here uh, to try out the suspension. So we'll see how the uh, XSR does on those section of whoops as well. The bike is very retro. Even the mirror design is quite retro as well. The nice brushed aluminum look of the tank. All right, so like I said, we're in B mode. We'll try out all three modes, see what happens. And we'll swap through the traction control modes as well and see how the bike feels. I'm just going to give her here. The acceleration is pretty smooth. Very, very smooth. I've, uh, I've ridden the FZ09, which is a... Uh, is also another cross-plane three-cylinder engine. I don't know if it's the same engine that's in this one, but uh, the uh, the engine in the FZ09 feels very sport bikeish. This engine doesn't uh, doesn't give me that impression. It feels, um, to be honest, a lot smoother. It's, it's a very smooth motor. I almost can't feel any vibration in the bike whatsoever from that engine. Like if I didn't know, if I couldn't see the speedo, I would barely know that this thing was running. It's so smooth. Wow, I'm impressed. Sounds pretty good. Let me lift my uh, visor here so you guys can get a good sound. Wow. Factory exhaust sounds pretty decent as well. This is a very nice bike. I'm very impressed off the bat here. The uh, hand grips are a little bit wider than standard uh, bikes that I've ridden. By no means is it uncomfortable, but they are a little bit wider. I'm comparing them to, like I said, the uh, the FZ09 
and the uh, FZ07 which I ride uh, the handlebars definitely feel a little bit a little bit wider but uh, it is very comfortable Yamaha's goal of uh, maximizing rider comfort on the XSR9 they uh, they didn't fail uh, even with the seat I fit comfortably in uh, it does have kind of a dip uh, in the seat yeah actually the seat is very very comfortable it just cradles you right in there uh, we'll see as the ride progresses if it's uh, as comfortable as they say but uh, so far it was a little bit firm while I was standing on it but uh, sitting and riding it's quite smooth uh, B mode it's got throttle it is a little bit delayed so we'll swap it out into standard mode here at the light and uh, we'll see what kind of performance difference we get uh, on road the suspension so far it uh, it absorbs all the bumps nicely uh, anything bigger like this little pothole right here you definitely will feel for sure but uh, the small stuff the miners here in Edmonton the way they are is uh, we should cover most of these little these little road snakes and cracks and stuff we should have no problems with them so let's switch it out here into standard mode and then we'll go to a mode shortly after here so standard mode is going to give me a little bit more of a throttle response a little bit more fun on the bike less nanny less helga more heidi you know Woo! that's a big difference actually <laughs> actually I had to let off the throttle a little bit because the wheels started to want to lift <laughs> Wow, if that's standard mode, let's see what uh, A mode ends up being like. It's going to be a good time, boys and girls, today. Yeah, that A mode, or that standard mode is uh, definitely noticeable. If, uh, if A mode is, <laughs> is going to be as big a jump as it was from standard to B, A mode is going to be a monster. Oh. Well, these guys got ahead a little bit. Wow. The shifting as well. Uh, first into second, second into third. Barely felt it. Barely even noticed. It's a good thing this thing has a gear indicator because I had to look down to make sure I actually shifted. It was so smooth. I am impressed, boys and girls, with this bike. I know I have a friend of mine who's looking at buying the uh, XSR 900, and uh, they're coming from a Gixxer 600 that they've had for some time now. And uh, I will tell you right now, this thing's got a bit more power, but uh, as long as you don't ride stupid, you ride within your abilities, uh, the XSR 900, it's a very, uh, very controllable bike so far. Uh, I would highly recommend that if you are a novice rider, avoid the XSR, avoid the FZ09, avoid the FZ10. Basically, stay under 600 cc's ideally. There are some exceptions to the rule, but uh, I would highly discourage anyone who's a brand new rider. Uh, these new Yamaha bikes uh, with their modes. Uh, you know, you'll be tempted to stick it into A mode and give her shit, but whew, I would not recommend it as these modes are, these bikes are powerful. If you're an experienced rider, the XSR 900 is, uh, you're going to like it right out of the box, boys and girls. You're going to like it. All right. So I'm cruising right now. Uh, we're doing about 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, I'm sitting just below 4,000 revs in fifth gear. Uh, it does have an eco indicator. I just noticed that as well. Uh, what that does is not an eco mode, so it's not going to save you fuel. What it is is indicating to you that you're driving in a way that is fuel efficient for the motorcycle. And again, this is a 14 liter tank on this bike. So if you are doing any kind of long distance trips, where you're driving out of town three, four hours, whatever the case may be, uh, that eco mode or that eco light will be a good friend of yours because uh, we all want to be riding. We don't want to be filling up the tank. 
And uh, this bike, 14 liter tank, it's very similar to the FZ07. Uh, I know when I take my bike out on the uh, highway, uh, if I'm not uh, riding eco-friendly, we'll say, then uh, I do suck down a lot of gas. And this has one extra cylinder. But uh, so far, the bike is excellent. I, I have no complaints at this point. I have no hot spots. I've got absolutely zero vibration. Uh, I haven't really tested the brakes too hard yet, so we'll, we'll check that out here in a little bit. Visibility over the mirrors, with the mirrors, is all good. You're going to see a little bit of your elbows and stuff, but that's... Uh, that's pretty normal on bikes. If it's a big problem for you, you can always change out the mirrors to have something else. You know, the those little bar end mirrors or something with a longer extension on it. There's uh, there's all kinds of stuff out there. So the XSR 900, if you guys didn't uh, catch it at the beginning of the video, it's a retro styled bike. The seats, uh, the headlights, the gauge cluster. Well, it's one gauge, but uh, the cluster itself or the gauges. Even the look, the general look of the bike is retro styled. But the technology on this motorcycle, the new cross-plane crank, uh, the ABS control systems, traction control, uh, engine modes, all that stuff, it's very modern. The suspension is also very modern. Oh, looks like we're giving her some gas here. Let's speed it up a little bit. Woo! This thing picks up quick. And uh, those brakes, guys, <laughs> if you hurt me, uh, those brakes do work. The XSR, we're doing uh, 40 kilometers an hour, third gear. It's very, very stable at slow speeds. It's very, very stable at uh, the higher speeds I've had so far. We'll see if we can open it up a little bit more once we get through all this lovely construction. Welcome to Edmonton, boys and girls, in the summer. It's construction season. We don't have a summer. All right, since we're stuck in this lovely, boring construction, let's do the mandatory nimbleness test. You guys have seen everybody do it. Wow. This thing has no issues flicking over whatsoever. Stable. Completely stable. The nice thing with this XSR is that everything is so smooth. The throttle response is so smooth. The suspension, the engine, everything is so smooth on this motorcycle that it's completely comfortable to flick it side to side. You have no worries whatsoever. The bike is so stable and smooth, it's ridiculous. I don't know what the Yamaha engineers were thinking when they designed this, but they need to think about it some more and maybe send some of those guys over to uh, Honda and Suzuki and. You know, get some more innovation going, especially over at Honda, boys. Man, you guys got to catch that shit up. But, uh, man, this bike is so smooth. Oh, yes. We're finally ending construction. So we can finally open this bitch up here. So we'll stand forth. I want to get into the upper RPM bands here for you guys, since we've been riding nice and slow through construction. So fourth gear. 6,000 revs, the engine is still smooth. I can honestly feel more of the road surface uh, than the engine. That's unbelievably smooth. When you can feel the road surface more than the engine, that's ridiculous. Oh, there we go. Once you hit about that 6,500, 7,000 revs, you start to feel the vibration in the foot pegs. Now I'm wearing uh, racing boots. They got a bit of a firmer sole. So on this bike, if you wear nice soft rubber soles, it might be a bit better. There are no, there are no rubber pads on your foot pegs. So there's nothing really to stop the vibration now that I'm uh, entering the higher engine revs. Oh, there we go. But into the 8,000 rev area, it starts to smoothen out again. So it's that 6,000 rev range where I start to feel a bit of vibration, but when you crank it up beyond the eight, it goes away again. So they said there would be some twisties up ahead, so we'll see what we get when we get up there. I'm not sure. 17th Street, I think this is where they have the, uh, the rough bits. 
Yamaha has made an excellent bike. Oh, acceleration. Oh, this bike is awesome, boys and girls. It's awesome. All right, so I think we're definitely going to be coming up to the point here where we got some rough stuff. So we'll see how the suspension handles. Uh, a patch of road, I guess it's selected for the Super Tenere, which is the adventure bike with uh, seven and a half inches of suspension travel. So it should be, uh, should be decently bumpy, I hope. We can really give this uh, suspension a shot. Again, the front suspension, five and a half inches, 5.4 inches travel. Uh, the rear is about 5.1. Looks like we've reached a bit of the uh, rough stuff. Uh, you can feel it for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely noticeable on the rough stuff. It's not as smooth. But then again, it's not built for that. But the bike does run pretty good here on this stuff. Yeah, purposely going over the rough stuff for you guys. Wow, the throttle response is fantastic on this bike. Wow. Yeah, so rough roads, it's not the greatest suspension uh, for rough roads. But then again, this bike is not designed for that kind of stuff. But if you do are traveling on it, it will uh, it'll work really, really well. So I guess we're at the midway point here. All right, so we just had our midway point stop here. Oh, lovely little fountain in the middle of the lake. That's interesting. So we took the opportunity to switch it out into A mode. I'm not sure if that was a good idea considering we're still on the rough roads here, but we'll see what happens. So we've swapped her out. Ooh, that's a big bump. That's a little bigger than I wanted to take in this bike. <laughs> that's actually a bit of a pothole, not a bump. Uh, so anyways, now the throttle in A mode is not as smooth. You guys can maybe pick it up in the camera. When I just twist the throttle here, just watch the hand. All right, just that, that little bit. It's kicking right away. So if you want the smoother throttle, stick with uh, standard and B mode. A mode is definitely more aggressive. There's more of a kick. You'll probably be more prone to lift in the front end in A mode. Well, probably. You definitely will be more prone. Uh, but the XSR, man, the performance on this bike, it's still, uh, with the exception of now the throttle in A mode, everything is still smooth. The engine is still pulling smoothly. Wow, well done Yamaha, well done. First generation of a new line of bike and uh, man, he did a good job. Oh yeah, I will tell you, it's nice to be back on the tarmac. Nice smooth asphalt, let's avoid that gravel a little bit. Wet roads. Oh, wet and muddy. This is going to be slippery, boys and girls. Well, let's see how the traction control does. Let's turn it up. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of slipperiness here with the mud and the gravel and the water. Yeah, that's the problem with A mode on this sort of uh, road. You got a lot of power, it is jerky, and I feel the rear wheel wanting to let go almost right away. All right, let's open it up here. We got ourselves a bit of a gap. Wow, that gap closes real quick. <laughs> that gap closed real quick. I thought I had a little bit of gap so I could actually uh, open it up a little bit, but nope. I was in fourth gear, and that gap, you guys can see, that gap closed fast. Tons of power in A mode. Tons and tons of power. Let's 
let's bring it up. I need to rent this rev band up here. Let's drop back. We got a little bit of a gap to the pack behind us. I'm gonna drop back a little bit here. I'm in third gear, 80K an hour, uh, just above 5,000 revs. Oh, she wants to lift again. Man, even in third gear, doing almost 100k an hour, she wants to lift. Got to really lean forward with my 230-pound uh, frame to keep the bike down. And relax the throttle a little bit, too, because it will lift even with my ass on it. Of course, we're going to do no more than 70 kilometers an hour for safety. Oh, she just keeps pulling. She just keeps pulling. Headed back to the dealership, little final review of the XSR 900. Uh, wow, Yamaha, bravo. <laughs> the, uh, the bike is absolutely amazing. It's stable, it's smooth. The throttle response in every mode is fantastic. It's what you'd expect. Uh, a mode, a little jerky, right? But that's A mode, right? It's meant to be aggressive. If you're uh, riding around town, you guys will be more than happy in standard mode. The bike has a ton of power, a ton of grunt. It hauls ass, absolutely hauls ass. Is it better than the uh, FZ09? Ooh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, I really like that FZ09, but you know, this XSR, I rode the uh, FZ09 yesterday and uh, it definitely felt like a sport bike, but uh, this XSR, it feels, uh, the engine feels smoother. I don't know if it's the same motor or not, but it might be. I'll have to confirm if it's the same engine in the uh, FZ9, but I don't know, for some reason this bike uh, I rode that exact FZ09 yesterday to my left here and uh, this one does feel smoother than that one. I will say that. Oh, little grunt, little grunt. She goes, boys. This is a fantastic bike. I can't say enough nice things about it, Yamaha Bravo. You, uh, you did a good job on the XSR900. Uh, I definitely say if you guys are interested in a bike like this, if you guys like the looks, if you guys want the performance, if you like the naked bike, uh, definitely, definitely head out to your local dealership uh, and check out the XSR 900. The bike is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. If I wasn't so dead set on that FZ10, uh, this bike would be uh, a contender for me right now. Uh, wow. Absolutely spectacular, this bike. It's so smooth. Everything about it. I'm gonna switch back to the standard mode here. Just so I can get that nice B mode standard. There we go, neutral state. Oh, there's that smooth throttle again. Oh, yeah, if you guys aren't trying to, you know, race this thing, stay in standard mode. The throttle delivery is so much smoother. Uh, a mode, you definitely have that little bit of a jerk uh, when you twist the throttle a little bit, but man, in standard, it's just so smooth. B mode, you know what? B mode, I'm gonna call butter mode because B mode is even smoother. Uh, it'll be just fine for riding around town. Uh, and like I said, pull in the clutch, hit the mode button. You can switch out your modes to do, uh, to be more aggressive if you want. Uh, but man, I mean, Yamaha, bravo, bravo with this bike. I, uh, I can't say enough nice things about it. it. The looks are fantastic. The performance is amazing. The smoothness, the, the, the response, everything. Just bang, 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 bang. Five star all the way through. Yeah, I gotta say the XSR, I got no comfort issues whatsoever. The seat is remarkably comfortable. I'd like it to be a smidge softer. Uh, but the seat is great. I'd like there to be some uh, rubber isolators on the foot pegs. That would be lovely as well. 
uh, maybe just kind of tune out that uh, 6,000 rev bandish vibration you get from the engine. Uh, but like I said, it does go away uh, around that 8,000 mark. So, um, no, have I been driving with my turn signal on the whole time? I don't know. But uh, bravo Yamaha, you guys did a wonderful job on the XSR 900. Uh, I don't know if I can say anything bad about it. Really can't. It's uh, it's an amazing, amazing bike, especially for a first generation. It's an amazing bike. Well, guys, it pretty much covers it for the XSR 900. So I'll give you a final look at the bike here. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in buying it, definitely go check it out. The bike is, I got to say, fantastic motorcycle. Otherwise, guys, enjoy your day. Stay tuned for the uh, FZ10. And uh, Tac Moto out.